hi guys how are you doing i'm kit kiarie and welcome back to another video so this is an advice column i did part one last week and i'm continuing part two today so i have been answering questions off of instagram you guys have questions you want my advice on this is my take you can take it or leave it and i really really hope it helps please don't forget to subscribe like share all of those wonderful things all right let's get into it Is it okay for your partner to continue relating with a mutual friend who you've fallen out with completely? By relating, I mean phone calls, checking up on her, and, and now and then inviting her to our parties. I asked her, why did you fall out? Does he know you don't want her to be around? She told secrets that I had shared, he, she answered, um, and I have told him, but he says, that's not my problem, that's a problem between you women. So, he knows, I asked, so he knows that you don't want her around but he still invites her and he said yeah and she said yes he does the other day we were meeting for drinks with a few friends and he called her to come the thing is my boyfriend and her have worked in the same company before that's how we met ah okay so this is your boyfriend's colleague and you don't you're not um you used to be friends and now you're no longer friends and he keeps inviting her places okay so i i would recommend telling your boyfriend this is not working for me and you i do not want to spend time with this person if you really really want to spend time with this person i cannot be a part of that engagement your boyfriend now then has a choice between a person who is a colleague and his girlfriend and that that will just show you where his <laughs> where he is priorities lie because he doesn't care that you're uncomfortable and i know you know that he doesn't care that you are uncomfortable with somebody he is only looking out for himself so if you remove yourself from the equation you don't have to suffer you don't have to suffer you can remove yourself if you remove yourself from the equation maybe it will change something in him maybe it won't but then it will still have you will still have your answer i'm a mother of three turning 30 soon i have no career no job i feel useless my self-esteem is really low i don't want to be a housewife all my life i have tried small business but kit is not working my husband doesn't have enough money to help me start a business i'm so lost who am i where do i belong oh my goodness yeah i can i i can imagine i can imagine this doesn't this sounds like a difficult situation and i'm really sorry that you have found yourself in a place where you don't know who you are um, raising children that's an important job and that's your job that you have chosen I think many women find themselves being a stay-at-home mom and they think that it is out of a lack of choice but you actually chose that and if you can reconcile that with yes I chose to do this maybe it will give you some of that power back and then you can start from a place of power of I chose this and now I would like to choose something else rather than I am choiceless I don't have anything to do what will I do here um, you, you you're not choiceless you actually chose to be a stay-at-home mom and now you want to do something else 30 that's yeah that's not even middle age you're literally 15 years from middle aged um you you have your whole life ahead of you so think um con what do you like to do that doesn't have anything to do with your husband or your children what do you like to do what does you as kid like to do do you like to read books do you like to paint what do you like to do and then take more interest in that and especially if it's a free activity take more interest in that and then you will begin to find yourself who you are what you like what you don't like um as you personally i hope this helps i'm sorry mama my husband is a mommy's boy he spends every day of the week his, with his mother they do contract deals and he's always with his mother these deals are rarely ever successful oh my god so he borrows his so he borrows money from his mother or his dad for upkeep he drops the kids in school in the morning proceeds to his mother's house for breakfast i'm already tired <laughs> then he plays video games okay all day 
or drives his mom around to run errands or whatever she's doing um okay i'm conflicted on whether to leave just because we have a great relationship except for the emotional abandonment when he's concerned about his mother we have a good life he's a good father plus i don't want to just leave any tips on what more i can do to convince him or to get him to do better i need him to actually work for his own money and to stop spending so much time with his mother okay is first mm, <laughs> is his mother bad like him spending time with his mother does it mean that does it mean that it takes away time from you because if that's the problem i would i would recommend you spend time with him and his mother so the three of you are always together now if his mother is just a normal babe who is living her life and his and her son always just wants to be with her maybe that's the kind of friend you're trying to have and when he goes to drop the kids go with him to spend time with him hang go for breakfast with his mother and him to spend time with him this might jolt something it's probably something you've not tried and you know we always told you have to try something different to get a different result so if you're spending time with him driving around with his mother or whatever it depends on the kind of work you do obviously but if you do have the time to do that then you will get to spend time with him right and it doesn't matter if his mother is in the, in the equation especially if she's a normal babe now if she is not a normal babe and she she's she's not kind to be around then you want to oh my god how do you do this <laughs> yeah engage in activities that he likes to do he likes to play video games play video games with him like babe after you drop the kids come home we play video games I don't know i think that's the way that you can take him away so that you can spend more quality time quality time with him and then just plan for dates plan for dates but if he's not if him spending time with his mother is not taking away anything from you except that's just so irritating then it might it might not be here like it might not matter in the grand scheme of things that's a very difficult situation my best friend who i have been there for for six years just sold a dress to me i was so shocked because when i buy something and it doesn't fit me i always give it to her no matter the price she also heard of a job opportunity and didn't share with me and i'm all and me i'm always telling her even giving her fare <laughs> so she can go for the interview I raised the issue and she apologized but I can't get over it. What should I do? Get over it. You can't you can't expect that people are going to be friends to you the way you are friends to them. And especially now you told her she she apologized. What is there? What is left? Now you're just holding on to a grudge which is not really fair. Yeah. So you need to get over it she didn't maybe she didn't mean it maybe she did not understand that that's the kind of friend you needed but you have communicated that now and now she gets it. now if she does the same thing again i mean the one of selling you a dress come on guys sell dresses right guys sell dresses to their friends that's how you support your friends um but and if you didn't want if you couldn't afford the dress or you didn't want to pay for it you could have said actually uh, uh, this is not my priority right now to spend money on this dress yeah, why don't you just give me the just give me the dress for free? I didn't know I'm trying to make some money. Anyway, that's your prerogative. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. But if you've already communicated, just move on. Just move on. You need to get over it. This thing of holding a grudge. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I live with my unbearable mother-in-law. How should I cope? Because when we plan to move out, she tells the son that she'll kill herself if we leave. She doesn't like seeing me comfortable. What should I do? I have a five month old and jobless. But the dad is working. Oh my goodness. Does, she, does he know? 
does he know that you're that you're having a very difficult time and that does it matter does he care that you're having a, a difficult time or he's only thinking about his mother um um his mother manipulating him because this is a manipulation when somebody tells you if you do such and such i'm going to die that's blatant manipulation and there are some people who have made good on that promise and they do it you know because it's a mental illness it has got nothing to do with you so what the choices people make when they are mentally unwell that has got nothing to do with you you cannot you can do everything in your power to make sure that somebody doesn't um, commit suicide and they still do and then now you'll carry the guilt with you for the rest of your life mm -mm. Mm -mm. Like explain to your 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 husband that his job is to leave his mother and his father <laughs> To leave them and to cleave to you. He is literally doing the wrong thing. This is the wrong Wrong thing and I am so sorry. I'm sorry, babe You know what there are very many of us who don't want to stand up to our mother-in-laws and we think that they are the government, they are the law, they are Jesus. You know, Julia Holy Spirit. You can tell her, Mama, by the way, in this house we're going to respect one another. I will respect you and you will respect me. And you will not do A, B, C, D anymore. I won't take it. Um, very many people are caught aback and they're like, oh my goodness, why would she say? Bullies. Bullies like people to cower. And when you stand up to bullies, there's a there's a shift in power that happens so try that and the the back and forth back and forth with words doesn't really work you just be like this is this this is my boundary and you're not going to cross it anymore my son is five and during the holidays my husband tells him he wants to enroll him in football club my son is not into it and even tells his dad why can't you understand when I say I don't want to join football? I have tried telling my son to even try it and he ends up not liking it. I, and if he ends up not liking it, I will remove him. But now I don't know what to do. Should I force him to do it? Football club. If he has not tried it, how does he know that he does not like it? He is five years old. And this is what I'm saying about our generation. We are so focused on we think that children can make decisions about everything <laughs> like it's football club you need to join something you need to join a club if it's not football what other club can you join because maybe your five-year-old just wants to sit home and watch tv have you thought about that maybe your five-year-old just wants to sit home and play video games and your husband is like, no, he must play, he must do an activity outside of the house. So allow him to join the football club, yes. Tell him he has to go to the football club. And after one week, he has to give it one week. After one week, if he doesn't like it, then you put him in a different club. But he, the option is not for him to stay home watching TV or playing video games, okay? We've been in a rough patch for a while, my husband, my husband and I. My husband lost his job sometime last year and when I started earning a bit more, my husband would budget all my money like he would say how I should spend it and on what. And if I said we need shopping, like let's say we need soap for dishes, he would say it's not important for now. First of all, I hope you are already seeing yourself how you are asking your husband permission to buy soap for dishes. So he began a business some days he opens and some days not depending on some money his parents promised fast forward to this year he opens a business with his friend it's not bringing it any bringing in any income so he, he says it's still dependent on me he keeps saying I am working but it's not paying properly so I can't even buy food and keeps asking if I have been paid I'm starting to find the monitor monitoring uncomfortable plus the budget of all the money yet I need some for my business okay sit down with your husband and agree that you are partners 
how much money does he bring in how much money do you bring in and this is what you're going to use it on he's not the boss you are not the boss nobody yet but somebody will be the manager right he cannot budget and tell you what to buy when that is not how a partnership works guys you cannot tell somebody no you can't buy soap for dishes you can't buy pads you can't buy sugar that doesn't work so the stuff for the house this is how much money we need i'm going to use this money for it to stop asking your husband for permission you taking him telling you this this that and the other that is you asking him for permission and him being the permission giver you need to take that permission back give it to yourself and give yourself the permission to buy dish soap i'm tired of my mother-in-law <laughs> constantly confront I, I'm so I'm tired of my mother-in-law constantly confrontations on literally everything I say every time we meet she randomly says you know girls these days love men with money or you know women these days kill their husbands to keep the wealth for themselves I'm getting sick of her toxic conversations I don't even want to go to the village with my husband am I petty you're not petty but you are being um what's the word when you when you think everything is about you <laughs> narcissistic is that the word when you think but you're not putting it out to other but you think everything she says is about you now if my mother-in-law would uh, would tell me you know girls these days love men with money i would say yes indeed yes in fact they really do and we would have a conversation about that it's not about me and even if i do love men with money and so so what and you know women these days kill their husbands to keep the wealth for themselves in fact yes there's another lady i read about who did it she is baiting you and you're taking the bait stop fighting if you agree with the things if in fact if she's not telling you i know you're going to one day kill my son why are you angry why are you triggered sis if this is not you just have conversations with her like somebody who is having a conversation with someone in a bus hey you know women nowadays kill their ass hey sure it's true do it like that she will be so confused she'll be she, because she's trying to bully you and you're so bullyable you're so bullyable <laughs> is that a word is that an actual word don't don't take it on anymore just agree just be like yeah hey wow you're really right you're right once i had about somebody who did this that and the other hey that lady there's this other one in my compound in my estate she does this that and the other gossip with your mother-in-law and make her your friend i have been dating a guy for over a year and we live together He has a kid from a previous relationship, which I kinda accepted. In February, this same guy has a different baby. A different baby showed up. He had hid the baby for three years. So the two kids are born a month apart in July and in August. Oh my God. The, sec the second baby mama is really threatening to harm me. She even moved near us to us because my guy says he's being stalked. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. I'm sorry. He's spending most of the time these days at the uh, with the other baby, and me. I stay at my. <laughs> He's spending most of the time with these other babies, and I stay at my parents' house to avoid the drama. But what is happening? He stays with the baby mamas. What are you doing? What do you mean? What is happening? <laughs> I miscarried our baby in December. Oh, I'm very sorry. The whole issue really scares me since I have step siblings. What's your advice on this? First of all, can you? No, that is not your boyfriend. That is a community boyfriend. That is everybody's boyfriend. Everybody's boyfriend. That woman is not stalking him. She, he is stalking himself with using her. He stays with her and the other lady, and you, you're at your mother's house. No, 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 girl. Girl. That, this still works. Men telling you, oh yeah, she, he's really, she's really into me. I don't know how to, but I have to be there for the children. No, you don't. 
No, you don't. Babes, you have nothing to do with the other baby mama. Stop talking to her. Stop engaging her. Leave your man in the streets where he belongs. And see someone about the miscarriage. I am so sorry about that. That's very, very sad. I'm 23 with three with three older brothers. No, three brothers. 30, 24, and 12. My parents are having very many issues in the marriage. My dad travels a lot. One day I found four packs of condoms in his luggage. And that's when it really hit me that my parents are having a hard time. I told my mom and she said she knew about it. She's tried to talk to him and he doesn't want to talk about it. She said she's just waiting for me to finish school so that I so that she can leave the man, her, her dad. And she had a plan in place that she would let me know about when the time is right. This got me scared because I've never known her to be this kind of person. Her side of the family also knows there is an issue but don't know what exactly it is. My question is, should I approach my dad about it? I have seen divorce papers somewhere in the house and I'm so heartbroken. I'm really sorry about this and it is none of your business that your dad is cheating on your mom and that your mom has decided to stay in the relationship. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't talk to your dad about it. This, this is a situation that your mom has to navigate and you can be there for her as another woman because you're a fully grown woman now you can be there for her but other than that there's nothing you can do you can't make your dad stop being community husband you can't make your mom stop clowning basically um her deciding to stay with a cheating husband has got nothing to do with you um and you just need to realize that and and free yourself from the burden of figuring out what to do about this. You don't have to figure it out. It's none of your business. It's none of your business, mama. And I'm really sorry. It feels maybe that, oh, my family is not together anymore. But families are different. And families can be together even though the mother and the father are not married to each other. Okay? You're still a family. Your father is still your father. Your mother is still your mother. Your brothers are still your brothers. I'm 32 this year and when are you getting married question is annoying. I might slap someone. I know. <laughs> I know. I mean the answer, the answer has always been when I do. When I get married it shouldn't be a secret. I think we need to remove a lot of energy from from the questions people ask us because it, it can become so annoying and you're always fighting and then you become battle weary and then you're now like the fighting babe and then it's not good for yourself care it's not good for your mental health so if you tell yourself this question is irritating and so and then literally just smile at way uh, smile and wave at people who ask you hey so when are you getting married <laughs> how do i get over simping so hard for me in my current situation p.s i love myself a lot Simping, like simping is when you are, when you love on somebody, I think that's what it is, when you love on somebody, but you can love on somebody, it's, that's fine, as much as they, like you would do anything for that person, right? But if they would also do anything for you, why do you need to get out of that? That's, that's love, that's wonderful, that's ideal, isn't it? To have babies or stay childless to get married or not how do you decide you decide on do you do you have money children cost a lot of money for many years so do you have money to have a child are you in a good mental space to have a child are you healthy enough to have a child these are all things that you need to think about when you want to have a child getting married again do you have money to be able to live with somebody or will somebody be able to support you will you be able to support somebody do you have it within you to compromise and uh, sacrifice and love um do you have all these do you have these abilities these are the things that will help you to decide should i get married um and it should i get married is a very vague 
and wide question. The question should be, should I get married to John? Because now if you are like, yes, I want to get married, then you start looking for somebody to marry, you're in trouble. Then you'll marry the anybody. <laughs> what if I'm dating a guy who has a small penis? Do I stay or leave? Um, I think sex is more about like the the fulfillment rather than the size of the penis like if he's if his his penis is small and he can't fulfill you sexually and if that's a deal breaker for you and he's not trying any other method of fulfilling you sexually he's only using his small penis that doesn't fulfill you then that's laziness because it doesn't matter if somebody has a big penis or a small penis if they're not doing anything else you know in the sex area then you won't be fulfilled right so it's about all those things and if that's a deal breaker and you're not getting fulfilled then i wouldn't stay i would leave and i'd be like well you're not trying i'm trying and you're not trying so we are not we are at different trying levels you know what do you think of a big age difference like 25 years you're marrying somebody 25 years your senior this and especially the, with men no, no no it doesn't even matter it doesn't matter if it's with men or women this for me always feels like a child and parent scenario 25 years it's a lot unless you are 50 and the person is 75 and then that doesn't matter but anything like 30 and 55 there's it there's something that always there's a power shift that happens that you really can't control i i don't recommend it at all I don't recommend it wow 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 top five travel travel tips for traveling with family mm, i i always organize what i'm where we're going to stay what we're going to do i organize it months in advance so that we start saving we know how much it's going to cost like impromptu trips with the family is really difficult because then you end up spending more because you didn't plan well and you didn't, didn't get good deals so the first thing i would say is organize very many months in advance and start to figure out what you're going to do where you're going to stay how much you're going to spend mm, travel with like companies that do travel for a living because they always have a cheaper rate because of the volume don't carry many things and especially if you have small children wherever you're going there'll be small children there as well and just know that children can survive on the bare minimum because children are born in the desert children are born in forests now if you're carrying a basin a cart just carry the essentials that you need everything else you can figure out when you get there try to travel and especially if it's a long trip try to travel at night if you're going by air so that children can sleep for the majority of the trip i think that's five i hope that's five <laughs> i'm 20 and i feel so much pressure to be rich in a relationship and have have it all figured out um as my peers where let me tell you guys i really don't recommend social media i don't recommend social media for young people it's it's crazy out here and me as an adult woman 36 i still feel pressure when i see people have different things and i'm still like hi oh, even me i want that even me i want that now imagine for a kid and 20 is quite young you're not a kid but that's quite you're still quite young i i really think people need to really go slowly on social media you need to choose who you're following very very just delete the app delete instagram delete because do delete tiktok because people out here will eh, and especially if you're following guys in america the uk where you will feel like you you want to be like that and it's it, that's really the exception that's not the rule most of your peers are exactly where you are how to survive with a polygamous man i have said this before i will say it again if you yourself as the woman are not polygamous like you don't want to be in a polygamous relationship there is no way your man can force you now if you marry someone like i'm married to martin and martin is like i want to marry a second wife me as kate have a choice i either stay and be sad or i leave and martin only has one choice one wife so martin can only be polygamous if the women in that polygamous setting agree 
Now, if you don't agree, you leave, right? And he can only have the one wife that he has. He cannot be polygamous if you do, nobody agrees. But if you agree and stay, then you have to do the work on yourself. And you have to have chosen. I have chosen this life. I have chosen this woman. I have chosen her. She is my co-wife. Now how do I do this to make sure I co? Are you going to make her your friend? Are you going to fight with her day and night? Are you going to fight with him? What you don't change, you choose. Is cheating a deal breaker in marriage? For me it is. Can people rebuild trust after cheating? I'm sure they can. For me, cheating is a deal breaker. And the only reason it's a deal breaker is because I will lose respect for you when you cheat on me. I'll be like, that's so cliche <laughs> and weak. I find that a weakness that I cannot get past. And if I don't respect you as my husband, what are we doing here? So for me, it's a deal breaker. And I do think people have have um regained trust after cheating and they have moved on after that and yeah so i think it just takes work 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 and especially on the person who cheated it takes a lot of work to regain that trust and keep you know say keep building that trust and never get tired of building the trust because well and even you having the grace to accept like yeah this person has really changed this person is showing that he has changed and she has she is regaining that trust and i can trust her okay last one what can i adv uh, advise on wedding budgets you need to have a budget that you can afford um and it and give yourself time to either save up or work for that money so that you when you're doing the wedgi wedding <laughs> wedding <laughs> when you're doing the wedding because a wedding is a party a wedding is not a marriage it has absolutely no indication as to how the marriage is going to go last um, the love you have for one another even if you have 10,000 you can still do a wedding with that So it just depends on how much money you have how much you're willing to spend on your party that you're throwing for others um, And go with that, but do not over exert yourself. I don't believe in taking loans for a wedding I don't believe in getting money from other people for your wedding it's a party. Imagine you want to throw a birthday party and you've called all your friends. Yeah, I have 50 friends for my birthday party and everybody must give me 20,000 because I'm trying to have a very big birthday party. Come on, guys. How do we... Uh, why? No, no, no. I don't think that's, that's correct. All right, guys. So I hope I helped you. And if I didn't get to your question, I will get to it another time. I'm going to have another one of these very soon. And yeah. I hope this was helpful and I really, really was able to think about some of the things that you guys shared with me. So thank you for that. Until next time, bye!